On the 3rd of July, armored personnel carriers of the 1st Infantry Division prepare to move northward in Binh Long Province as Operation El Paso continues. From a point 96 kilometers north of Saigon, the APCs head for a rendezvous with division troops well forward of the division's field headquarters at Quan Loi. After several hours, the APCs arrive at the designated rendezvous point and secure the area. The night will be spent here and the troops are expected to meet the armored unit in the morning. Soon, a resupply chopper appears with rations, water and mail for the crews of the tracked vehicles. For over a month since the 2nd of June, men of the 1st Division have been engaged in Operation El Paso in this area. During that period, Viet Cong losses have been reported at 788 killed and 37 captured. For the men of the armored elements, a hot meal is welcome. Mail call rounds out the day's schedule, then the APC crews settle in for the night. The following morning, the 4th of July, a race is held by the armored vehicle crews while waiting for the infantrymen to show up. A strange celebration of the holiday in the interior of Vietnam. By the process of elimination heats, only three APCs are competing in the final dash. Charlie Chan is the winner's name. Then it's time to pick up the troops for the long ride back to Quan Loi. The tracks move to meet the troopers as they come out of the jungles. The rendezvous is made and the foot soldiers board the vehicles. After a long sweep, they look forward to riding. When all of the infantrymen are loaded aboard, the APCs form a long column and move southward down jungle roads and across brushy fields. Alert gunners keep an eye peeled for the enemy as they pass through VC-infested countryside. Armored vehicles have been ambushed in the past. A Viet Cong suspect is spotted in the brush, and the convoy halts while he is taken into custody and questioned. The man is by himself, however, and the column continues on its way toward field headquarters at Quan Loi. Approaching the division area, the column is greeted by a welcoming banner. Later, in camp, the APC crews hear a letter of commendation for their performance in Operation El Paso during June. At Quignon, over 400 kilometers northeast of Saigon, is the busiest U.S. Army airfield in Vietnam. A fixed installation provides 24-hour-a-day air traffic control. Personnel direct air traffic operating under visual flight rules, direct ground control approaches, and log inbound and outbound flights. Vietnamese civilians are being trained here in various aspects of air traffic flight control. Farther to the northwest at Dok To is another Army airfield. Though planned as a temporary field, it has hard surface landing strips for all weather use. Air traffic control is provided using a portable combination flight control tower and radar van. This facility can be airlifted to other sites to control flights during field operations. Aircraft can land here during inclement weather with the aid of a ground control approach radar system. Near Play Me, 80 kilometers to the south, 
is the helicopter field for Operation Waikiki. This airfield provides control for helicopters, supporting the 3rd Brigade, 25th Infantry Division. When an air transportable control van is not available, an air controller can direct traffic effectively by using backpack radio equipment. At Cameron Bay in Vietnam, July 4th is no holiday for the men of this engineer port construction company. The unit is building a crossway between the shore and a DeLong pier. These men are assembling the 22,000 pound diesel hammer, which will be used to drive piling into place. Here, the hammer is being set inside its guide frame, which is called the lead. When the hammer is operational, it is positioned over the pile to be driven. A coffer dam is being constructed, and sheet piling is being used. This piling has been set in a cross beam to hold it in position as the giant diesel hammer drives it into the harbor floor. When completed, the structure will be 46 feet in length, and the space between the retaining walls will be filled with hydraulic ballast. This is the second pier of this type to be built by this engineer company. At On K, a small crew of men is busy blowing up balloons. It's all part of the activities of the Camp Radcliffe Meteorological Section, military weathermen of the 1st Air Cavalry Division. Hydrogen gas is used to fill the big weather balloons, which are sent aloft with data gathering instruments. The highly buoyant gas is manufactured right on the spot. Helium, which is preferred, is unavailable here. As the time for release nears, the weather instrumentation package is attached to the balloon. Then, the balloon soars upward with its lightweight radio sound to send back information on wind speed and direction. A radio direction finder is used to track the balloon and receive the information from aloft. In turn, the RDF sends the data along to a nearby weather van. The Mobile Meteorology Center, during this mission, plots wind factors, which would affect the accuracy of long-range artillery fire in the area. The artillery units need the information for fire control computation. As the information is received, it is recorded and quickly analyzed. A report is then made to the Fire Direction Center, where the fire control team uses the data to compute the adjustments required to place the projectile on target. The 8-inch howitzers fire accurately and successfully complete their mission. Vietnamese boys are enjoying the thrills of scouting under the sponsorship of American troop units stationed near An Khe. A Boy Scout troop and a Cub Scout pack, organized through the efforts of the local civil affairs unit, here take part in an overnight campout. An ornamental gate is erected by the scouts. Tents for administration and sleeping are set up as the area is made ready. Then the ceremonies begin. New scouts, after they subscribe to the scout oath, are presented with troop neckerchiefs, scout berets and insignia.
A group of shoeshine boys has been invited to participate in the camp out with the scouts. These boys, who help support their families, experience their first camp out. Scouting means having fun, along with the camp chores and ceremonies. The river Baugh then serves as the old swimming hole. Boys learn to swim and at the same time practice one point of the scout law, a scout is clean. A project which the scout troop has undertaken is the restoration of a monument dedicated to those people who have fled from North Vietnam and joined the fighting forces of the Republic of Vietnam. American advisors and Vietnamese scout leaders work together to make this youth program a success. On 29 June in Vietnam, ceremonies mark the departure of Sergeant Major William O. Wooldridge for Washington to assume his new duties as Sergeant Major of the Army. Later at Tonsonut, Wooldridge is congratulated on his new assignment by officers and men with whom he has served, most recently in the 1st Infantry Division. He is also presented with a plaque as a memento of his service in Vietnam with the Big Red One. In his newly created post, Sergeant Major of the Army Wooldridge will advise and consult with the Department of the Army Headquarters on problems affecting enlisted personnel's training, pay, promotions, and morale. He will also represent all enlistees at appropriate ceremonies. It is evening in Arnhem, Holland, and crowds are gathering to watch the NATO tap toe, or tattoo. Representing the royal family of the Netherlands, Princess Beatrix and her husband, Prince Klaus, arrive to witness the colorful ceremony in which military bands of the NATO member countries will participate. This performance, taking place on 27 June, opens with a motorcycle parade. At its conclusion, the combined bands appear. Later in the performance, this masked band represents the United States. own Highlanders and the Royal Scots Greys join in this presentation.
Finally, all of the NATO bands join to conclude the program.